All right, here's a question for Hilton from uh, Richard from MX Tech in the States. And he's asking, um, from the outside, the fork appears the same as it has since 2003. Uh, the cartridge is now a three-piece assembly, but all the other internals appear to be the same as the previous years. What are the changes in the design, and what are the advantages of those changes to the 2009 fork that you, that you put together? Okay, um, look, in 2003... The fork was still pretty crude, it was one of the first sort of upside downs. What happened is we had a 14 millimeter spindle originally. Then in 2007, we went to a 12 millimeter spindle, which it, it reduces the amount of oil flowing over the base valve as the fork compresses. So we found advantages with this, just it's easier to control the damping when we had less oil flowing over the base valve. We still use the same piston on the base valve, but obviously with the, the smaller spindle, it changed the the amount of oil flow. Then we did a lot of work with the inner and outer tubes from sort of 2006 up with different contours on the outer tube and inner tube, what we call harmonic bending which allowed the fork to flex, I wouldn't say differently, but it allowed it to flex more efficiently without putting as much pressure on the bushes. So in other words the inner tube and outer tube would flex harmonically so to speak and in this way we reduced a lot of friction on the fork. In 2008, we also changed the, the bearing seat to a slightly more convex shape just to allow more movement of the bearing. As the fork flexed, it allowed the, the bearing to move with the fork inner tube, also reducing friction. In yeah, 2010, we also changed a bit on the contour again just to optimize that and also changed again the contours. We made it a thinner inner tube, which also allowed a better flexing characteristics. Then what happened in 2009 is we changed the fork cartridge diameter from 28 to 23 mil. Now the base valve piston is a 28 millimeter piston. We kept the 12 mil spindle but we used a 23 millimeter mid valve piston which allowed us to, to put, which created less oil flow over the mid valve piston but created the same amount of flow out the base valve. And we found this was more efficient and easier to make settings with and just increased the comfort on the fork. At the same time, having a, a better bottoming resistance as well. Whereas before, we would always get a situation where, you know, we'd have a very comfortable fork where we tend to bottom. With the 23-28 design, we found that comfort improved and bottoming resistance and progressivity of the fork also improved. And this, it's really hard to say exactly the principles, but it seemed that with the less oil flowing over the mid valve and the same amount over the base valve, it created better feeling on the fork, a better, how can I say, progression, a better comfort and allowed, it, it was also easier in the field we found to, to make setups, you know, we'd make changes and we'd feel a better difference in before. Fork is a result of more of an evolution than a revolution in terms of the design of the fork, you know? I think it always is, you know, I mean, we're learning all the time, even in at factory level. I think if you look at all the, the four contours today and bearing seats and, and flow dynamics, they're not huge differences, you know, we all sort of work in the same direction and I don't think there's been a, like a huge, how can I say, breakthrough in technology. I mean, I think a telescopic fork anyway, in theory, is not the optimum system, but it's still used today in all forms of, of motorcycle racing. So. You know, maybe in the future we see some type of electronic damping or, or more rigid front ends which go away from telescopic fork systems, but I don't think we're ready for that yet, you know. I, the, the, the theory obviously points in other directions, but in practice we're still finding that the system we use, the telescopic fork, has the best results. I mean, otherwise MotoGP would be riding with a different system, obviously, and yeah, it's, it's functioning well for us still, you know. And, Look, there are systems like that which in theory offer really good rigidity and anti-dive properties and yeah, also friction reduction in some areas, but it's just, I think these, these haven't really been developed to a point where we found them more efficient and more beneficial than a telescopic fork, and, which is, is, is quite interesting, you know, from a developer's point of view, because like I say, in theory, there are other systems which, which probably should work better, and, you know, actually you want the most rigid fork you can get in theory with as little friction as possible but we just haven't really the frame technology yet and 
technology in other areas where, where this theory is giving us the desired results, we're still getting better results with telescopic fault.